Welcome on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We are so glad that you found us. We hope that you can also find your bulletin. The bulletins, there's a link uh, on the if you're on the Facebook page right above this video. Or you can, if you're on the website, just click the Sunday worship box and the video is on the top and the bulletin is on the bottom. Or there was an email that went out that also had the bulletin in it uh, that you can look uh, click on the link. Today we have uh, Father Kelly Avihi from the cathedral who will be bringing us our sermon. And so we welcome him. Last week we had Mother Heather and today uh, Father Kelly Ave, um get a chance to get to know some of the priests that are on our square. I am still in Seattle, actually, or the area. Uh, my son's wedding was... Um, yesterday, I have to think, because I'm obviously filming this in advance. Uh, but anyway, uh, yes, 10-10-2020. So um, I am coming back on Tuesday, on the 12th. Let us now begin with our opening hymn. Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the Gloria.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now listen to the readings for this day. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 23rd Psalm, read responsibly by whole verse. We invite you to read along with your bulletins. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The second reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, oh, with thanksgiving, God. let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once more Jesus spoke to the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to the slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, 
How did you get in here without wearing a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Aloha kakahiaka kako. I'm Father Keleabe from the Cathedral of St. Andrew, here on the Queen Emma Square. My wife and I will be celebrating 33 years of marriage next week. Last year, our daughters gave us a gift that I'm still not sure if it's a blessing or a curse. They converted the VHS tape of our wedding into a digital format. They said, now you can watch it on your smart TV. Hmm, okay. Needless to say, it was very funny to watch. We all laughed at how big and puffy 80s hair actually was, especially mine. But how I secretly longed for those days again. My wife looked so young, her eyes shining so brightly as she looked at me with amusement. I, on the other hand, had sweat on my forehead and kept swallowing nervously. I'm not sure if it was because I was overheated from my tux or if I was scared to death. But then I realized I really did have nice hair. The best part of the video was watching the wedding reception, which was held at the old China House restaurant on Kapiolani Boulevard. You entered through a red moon-shaped door into a huge restaurant that could easily seat over 400 people. All the guests at the wedding looked beautiful. Everyone was dressed up in their best clothes. We watched as two Chinese lions danced their way through the crowded room, the beat of drums guiding each step as we fed them lettuce and li si. My grandfather dressed in a Japanese yukata and sang his favorite Japanese songs, and my sister did a Tahitian dance. There were relatives on the mainland hugging and greeting everyone that they hadn't seen for years, and the video even included each and every dish of the nine-course dinner, served by waiters in red uniforms. Our wedding reception was embarrassingly, embarrassingly loud, frenzied, chaotic, and joyful. And I took it for granted because this is how a wedding should be. And I knew that in the future, I would be attending so many more wedding parties, just as boisterous as this one. But I was wrong. Who knew that 33 years later, it would be impossible, maybe even illegal, to get together for a huge wedding due to pandemic restrictions? This weekend, I'm scheduled to officiate at a wedding of three people, the groom, the bride, and her mother. Which brings us to this morning's gospel reading. Now, this wedding banquet was a mess. A king decides to have a wedding feast for his son. He invites everyone, everyone that is, on the A-list. This will be the biggest event of the year. So imagine the king's shock, dismay, and disappointment when not only do the guests from his A-list refuse to come, but they proceed to beat up and kill his messengers. Of course, the king is furious and pretty much takes out his anger on innocent people. Following this havoc, people are invited from his B-list, which included everyone, both good and bad, and soon the hall fills with guests who would appreciate an invitation. And you can see the king is finally relaxed and happy, until he begins to look around the room and notices a guest who wasn't wearing the, cl the correct clothes. That guest is suddenly thrown out into the darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Is this the good news of the Lord? As this parable unfolds, we understand that the people who were first invited purposely snubbed the invitation. They either had better things to do, or they didn't like the king. And in anger, the king responds by inviting everyone from every corner of life, the poor, the mistreated, everyone. And this is what we like to hear, right? The kingdom of heaven is inclusive. Everyone is welcome. We can't help but smile and feel satisfied. But then we are shocked by what appears to be the senseless ejection of a poor guy who shows up with the equivalent of a t-shirt and rubber slippers. 
If he invited everyone, why is he kicking out this guy for not dressing properly? It makes no sense until we understand the culture of the day. In the time of Jesus, as well as today, weddings are important events, and they come with their own set of rules and expectations. At that time, a person would automatically know that if they were to attend such a, ce a celebration, they should wear a wedding garment. And if you didn't have the money to purchase one, the host would provide one to you free. All you had to do was put it on. We know that this guest wasn't properly dressed. When he was handed the wedding garment to be put on, he refused. And since he refused, he was shown the door. The message this morning is simple. First, don't refuse God's invitation to the kingdom. How often have we heard God's call but didn't respond? How often have we put God on the side, knowing He's there somewhere, and will answer when we have the time? We say we have more important things to deal with. Second, we might respond to the invitation, but we're not excited about going. We go because we have to, or everyone else is going, and we make the motions, but when we get there, we refuse to do what is right. We refuse to wear the right clothes. We don't really change. We're comfortable as we are in our t-shirt and rubber slippers. But you see that wedding garment is the transformation in our lives when we accept God's call. We need to put on that garment of love, put on that garment of justice, and put on that garment that forgives our enemies. We need to clothe ourselves in Jesus Christ. We can't come to the banquet expecting to remain unchanged. We'll be shown the door. For many are called, but few are chosen. When the day is done, when my last day is done, I hope to be grateful. Grateful that God had invited me to the party and that I have put on the garments that changed me not only on the day of my baptism, but every single day of my life.
to join me in professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayers. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. For the church and for the world, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the non-parochial clergy serving in this diocese, the Reverend Sarah Schisler Goff and Ms. Heather Elizabeth Goff, the Reverend John Haoli Tomoso and Mrs. Susan Tomoso. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of the province of Uganda and the Most Reverend Stephen Samuel Kazimba, Archbishop of Uganda and Bishop of Kampala. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to the glory and honor of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. During this time, we remember especially those impacted by COVID-19. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will may be fulfilled, and that they and we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. So again, this morning, I want to say thank you to Father Kelly Ave He, who provided our sermon this morning. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the service, he is the vicar for pastoral care at the cathedral, just a stone's throw from where we are. Uh, last week, we heard from Mother Heather. This week, Father Kelly Ave. Those are the two priests now that are serving at the cathedral. Uh, it's a wonderful gift of their sermons, especially during this time when I am away, uh, and I will be back with you again next week. Birthdays. We have four birthdays this week. Uh, Clinton Yee's birthday is on the 13th. Jenna Matsumoto's birthday is on the 15th. Rose Barroza's birthday is on the 16th, as well as Jocelyn Choi's. So let us pray for Clinton, Jenna, Rose, and Jocelyn. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Clinton, Jenna, Rose, and Jocelyn, as they begin another year. 
Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we have two anniversaries today. Terry and Susan Dang and David and Amanda Stivers. So let us pray for Terry and Susan and David and Amanda. Congratulations to both uh, sets of, both couples. Let us pray. Oh, sorry. I see I have one more as I scroll further down here. Bert and Cheryl Fong have an anniversary on the 17th. Um, that would be next Saturday. So let's pray for all three, Terry and Susan, David and Amanda, and Bert and Cheryl. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully upon Terry and Susan, David and Amanda, Bert and Cheryl, as they celebrate the anniversaries of their marriages. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may continue to grow and rejoice in the promises and vows they have made to one another. Give them grace to live together in love, forgiveness, and mutual care through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And again, this is now the offering time, so we can't pass those koa bowls, but uh, please continue to send in your offerings and pledges to the church office or to go to the website and click on the donate button. We sincerely appreciate your part in making this ministry possible. And as I have said before, if you are struggling um, emotionally, financially uh, through this time, this is a very challenging time in which we are all living, don't struggle alone. Please reach out uh, and uh, let me know. And we will travel alongside you and help in ways that we can. Let us pray the Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now join in singing our sending forth hymn.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.